TEM analysis of the parallel plate waveguide. In this video, we're going to perform just the TEM analysis of a parallel plate waveguide. So we'll go through all those details and then do an example at the end. TEM analysis. So for TEM analysis, remember this came down to solving Laplace's equation. So we will analyze this in Cartesian coordinates because that is consistent, most consistent with our parallel plate waveguide. So the Laplacian, if we expand that, is written as three partial derivatives of the electric potential V, all set equal to zero. However, the parallel plate waveguide is uniform in the X and Y directions. It's only that vertical Y direction where we could be on or off the plate. So that means any derivatives in the X or Z directions has to be zero. So we cross them off and we are left with a single derivative in the Y direction. So Another aspect of this, we would like to analyze this as a one-dimensional problem as a slab waveguide. So that means if there is any width W to this, we are ignoring any fringing fields that may be outside of this. We're just going to pretend as if all the fields are completely straight from one plate to the other. And that's a great approximation in the middle. So if we have a wide parallel plate waveguide, it's a very good approximation. If we happen to have a case where this is very narrow, what we're about to do is not a good analysis. And in fact, we'd have to go do a more complicated analysis of this. Since this reduces to just one dimension, we're going to ignore the fringing field, pretend the field is uniform between the plates. There's only one independent variable left. And so our partial derivative becomes an ordinary derivative. And that's going to make this very easy to solve. So our governing equation is just now the second order derivative of V in the Y direction equals zero. That is a one dimensional Laplacian. So looking at our solution, we're really just obtaining a solution between the plates. Yes, there is an electric potential outside of the plates, but that's not what we're analyzing. We're looking at this as just a, a uh, slab waveguide, and we're only interested in what's going on between the plates. So our solution is restricted there. Before we can solve it, we need boundary conditions. So that is, what is the electric potential on the top plate and the bottom plate? For this, we will apply a voltage V0. If we let the bottom plate just be ground, for example, then we can set our electric potential at Z equals zero to zero. And the electric potential at Z equals D, so a distance D above the ground, now we're at the top plate, to V naught. So we have exactly V naught between the plates. Another perfectly valid thing I could do, I could set this plate to minus V naught over two and the top plate to positive V naught over two. The only thing that will really matter is that the difference between these two should be V naught. But what I have written here seems easy enough to proceed with. So here we are. Here is our differential equation. It's the first order Laplacian. Here's where we're solving it, and here's our boundary conditions. In fact, we could hand this off to a mathematician, not even tell them what all this stuff means, and that person could solve this for us and give us the general solution. In this case, it's very easy. We integrate twice to get the general solution. So we have a second order derivative equal to zero. So when we integrate this equation, we end up with a first order derivative on the left and a constant a on the right. If we integrate this second equation again, we get the just the electric potential, no derivative of it, equals our constant from before times y plus a new constant. So that is our general solution. Now to find a and b, we have to apply our boundary conditions, and that's next. So there's our general solution. We wrote it there for convenience. Let's apply the boundary condition at the bottom plate. So our electric potential at the bottom plate equals zero. So 
when we set y equal to 0, we'll have a times 0 plus b equals 0. So this term disappears, and we just end up with b equals 0. So we've already found that this second constant that arose when we solved our differential equation is 0. It's not there. Now let's find a. We find a by applying the boundary condition at the top plate by setting y equal to d. So we'll go up here and we'll set y equal to d. So a times d plus b has to equal v naught. However, we found in the when we applied the previous boundary, this is 0. So we just have a times d equals v naught, and we solve for a. a is simply v naught over d. And so we found a, and now we can write the general solution for our parallel plate. And there it is. However, we're not finished. Just knowing the electric potential between the plates really doesn't tell us much. We want to learn more about the waveguide. What does the mode look like? What is its impedance? And so on. So we're not finished. So in order to learn more about the waveguide, let's calculate the electric field. Well, remember from electrostatics, the electric field is related to the electric potential through the gradient. So electric field intensity is the negative gradient of the electric potential. Well, we have this expression for the electric potential now, so we can calculate its gradient. And we go through all this math, and we end up here. And so we only have a component in the y direction. So the electric field is pointing straight from one plate to another. It's perfectly vertical. And it's uniform. Notice there's no y in here. So that means the electric field in the y direction does not vary. It's a constant electric field. And the negative sign here shows that the electric field is going from the top plate to the bottom plate. And that's consistent with how we define electric fields, always going from positive to negative charge. Or in this case, from positive potential to, or from higher potential to lower potential. So everything's consistent with what we already know. So here's how we might write our solution. So this came from an electrostatic analysis. So right now, this is a completely static electric field. What about the wave nature of it? We ignored that by analyzing this as an electrostatics problem. Well, that's pretty easy to do. To look at this as a wave solution, we simply take our electrostatic solution and tack on this e to the minus j beta z. What we found doing the electrostatic analysis was just that amplitude term. So now we have our wave solution for the electric field. We want to learn about our waveguide, so we need to keep solving for things. The next logical thing to solve for is the magnetic field. And so essentially we substitute this answer into Faraday's law. Uh, to simplify that down a little bit, we can go through impedance, too. We can use this expression when we talked about waves to get the magnetic field. So we plug in our expression for E, we turn our crank, and we end up here. And what we see is that the magnetic field is pointing in the same direction. It is a constant. It's in the X direction. So this is now parallel to our parallel plate waveguide. And it has the same E to the minus J beta Z. Now that we now... Now that we know both the electric and magnetic fields, we're in a good position to learn more about this. Since we know the fields, now we can start learning things. So let's calculate an expression for the impedance of our TEM wave. So the impedance is defined as our applied voltage divided by the current. We haven't talked about current yet, but in fact, we sort of know the current because we've calculated the magnetic field. And from our discussions in magnetostatics, we understand if we know the magnetic field, we can figure out what the current is. Remember, if we have a sheet of current, this K is our surface current density in units of amps per meter. If we cross product with the surface normal and divide by two, that gives us the magnetic field. And for us, the surface normal is in the negative Y direction. Now we actually have two plates. We have a top plate and a bottom plate. So the magnetic field due to two plates is twice what we just talked about. So it's K cross N. 
Well, the current is lumped into this K term. So we would like to solve this equation for K. And when we do that, here's what we get. K is H cross the AY, the unit vector in the Y direction. Now I've dropped this two sheet subscript here, but this is the magnetic field due to both sheets. Just for simplicity, I've, I've dropped that. Okay, let's keep going. The total current we can find by integrating the surface current density across the plate. So we're going to integrate the surface current density dot product in the direction the wave is propagating. And we're going to integrate that over the width of our plate. Well, we have an expression for K in terms of the magnetic field. Now we can plug that in. And now we can look at AY dot AZ and our integration. We just integrate H sub X over the width of our plate. From our electromagnetic analysis, if we set Z equal to zero, we know what the magnetic field is. That's V naught over A to D. Now we can take this expression, plug that into this integral, and get an expression for total current, which is just the width of the guide over the separation of the plates times the applied voltage divided by the impedance of the material between the plates. Now we're in a position to finally calculate an expression for impedance. It's V naught, which is the applied voltage over I. We just got an expression for I. We plug that in here, our V naughts cancel, and we end up with this nice, pretty expression. And a good check to make sure we're right is that current and voltage does not occur in there. So our impedance of our line should not depend on voltage or current for a linear system. So now we have an expression for the impedance of a parallel plate waveguide. And I'll warn you ahead of time, this is really only valid if our parallel plate is very wide. When it becomes narrower, that approximation breaks down and it's really not good to use. It'll get you within an order of magnitude of what the actual impedance would be. Uh, but it is much more accurate for very, very wide parallel plates. Let's think about the propagation constant. Where did this arise everywhere? Well, it didn't. And so we have to look deeper to figure this out. Remember in a previous lecture, we found that for the TEM modes, our phase constant and wave number were the same. And then this led to the discussion of the cutoff frequency being zero. But what it tells us is that the speed of the wave is real in the transmission line is really the same as the speed of a wave if it were just in the dielectric in the plate. So TEM waves propagate about the same speed as a, as a plane wave would. Well, that lets us set our phase constant equal to omega times square root of mu epsilon because we used to write K equals omega times square root of mu epsilon. So that must be our phase constant for the TEM wave. Maybe we can even find equations now for the distributed inductance and capacitance of this line. So a couple slides ago, we derived an expression for the characteristic impedance of our parallel plate transmission line. If we look at this as a parallel plate capacitor, we could borrow what we've done from electrostatics and write our capacitance. Let's think about the inductance now. Okay, so this is the equation we derived a couple slides ago. We also know from our discussion of transmission lines that the characteristic impedance is the square root of distributed inductance over distributed capacitance. Well, L is what we're trying to find, but we have an expression now for our distributed capacitance. It's what we found in electrostatics, so we can plug that in here. Now what we'll do is we will set the expression we derived in this set of slides, set that equal to this square root, and that lets us derive an expression for the distributed inductance. Here's a visualization of the TEM mode in a parallel plate waveguide. So the blue lines here, the blue arrows, are showing the electric field vector, and the red is showing the magnetic field. So notice the electric field is pointing straight from plate to plate, although it does oscillate. It goes up and down because it's a wave phenomenon. And as the wave accumulates phase, it's going in and out. We're looking at just the real part of the wave, if you will. 
And the magnetic field is always pointing in the x direction, and it is also oscillating. But notice that the amplitude from plate to plate is completely uniform from plate to plate. It's not like there's a bright spot in the middle or it's some kind of weird wavy looking pattern. It's a completely uniform field between the plates. And that is our TEM mode. So here's a summary of what we did. We calculated the fields and here's what the fields look like between the plates. We got our phase constant. Since it's the TEM mode, there is no cutoff frequency. That, so the, the TEM mode goes all the way down to DC. We even now have an expression for the characteristic impedance. So TEM mode has no cutoff frequency. And the last little note here is not something we've talked about yet, but when we analyze the TM modes, what we'll find is the zero order TM mode is the TEM mode. And what I said now may not make any sense, but it will make sense when we get to that. Let's do an example of TEM analysis. Let's do an example. So here's a parallel plate transmission line, two millimeters wide, half millimeter separation between plates, and the dielectric constant or the relative permittivity between the plates is 2.3. So my question might be, what is the characteristic impedance of this line? We could also look at this as a design. What width could we choose to make the line exactly 50 ohms? Okay, first thing is impedance. Here's our equation for impedance. We have the separation between plates and the width. What we don't have is the impedance of the medium between the plates. So we'll have to calculate that and then go back to this equation. So the impedance is the free space impedance times the square root of relative permeability divided by relative permittivity. This is something we talked about in electrostatic. So free space impedance around 377 ohms. We weren't given anything about a permeability, so we just assume that that's one. We were given the relative permittivity or dielectric constant of 2.3. And so if we do the calculations, we get about 250 ohm impedance for the material between the plates. Now we can go back into our equation for impedance, plug in all the numbers we have, and we come away with 62.1 ohms. Now for the second part of this example, we would like to adjust the width away from this two millimeters so that we get a 50 ohm line. This is very typical for how we would design a transmission line. Normally things like thickness and permittivity are fixed and the degree of freedom that we most often use is the width of the transmission line. So we'll take our expression for the impedance of the line and solve it for W because now the impedance is the known thing, 50 ohms. We wanna plug that in and figure out what the width of the line needs to be. So we plug in our numbers and to get a 50 ohm line, we need the width of that line to be around 2.5 millimeters. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EMPossible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.